Before we transition to Musaf, I want to quickly share a moment that I had uh, a week and a half ago now, one that I've been thinking about a lot, especially as we've been nearing this weekend, which was meant to be two days of different but similar kinds of celebration. A week and a half ago, I was teaching my Melton Jewish history class, and the session title was called Finding a Woman's Voice, and dealt entirely with groundbreaking moments in the history of Jewish women. The expected conversations were all there. We discussed Mordechai Kaplan's daughter becoming bat mitzvah. We talked about ordained women in the conservative and reform movements and about the progressive push taking place right now in modern and open orthodoxy. But what was also in the course materials and what actually took up the majority of the sources were the stories of women who changed Judaism not through revolution, not through a moment of a bottom line, but through consistent determination and passion that opened the doors for the revolutionaries, that dug the footholds those revolutionaries used to create the movements and moments we celebrate today. It was an important acknowledgement, not just for the men in the class, but for all of us, because as people, especially as people of the 21st century, our attention is invariably drawn to the loudest voices, the most defiant voices, the voices that flash like the most effective kinds of advertisements. And we often overlook or miss entirely the myriad words and whispers spanning generations that made those famous voices possible in the first place. Today we were supposed to be in the sanctuary, being led in prayer by our sisterhood. And it's embarrassing for me to say this, but I failed to notice that this day was coming up on our calendar because, well, frankly, I'm spoiled. We're spoiled. I often make the mistake, and I know I'm not alone in taking Sisterhood Shabbat for granted because the Judaism that I know and love breathes with an assumed breath of egalitarianism, of women not being included as if they are affirmatively responding to an invitation, but rather being the kahal integrated into the very fabric of who we are as a synagogue family. But when I, and when we, take our present for granted, we also take for granted the chorus of voices that brought us to this incredible moment that we know simply as the way things are. The overwhelming majority of those voices were not revolutionary, or even loud for that matter, but they were persistent and emphatic and filled with the sense of justice and pride. And they deserve to be remembered, to be thanked, and to be celebrated. There's a famous Hasidic line that comes as a response to our Torah portion this week. So our parasha in discussing the different holidays of the Hebrew calendar illustrates how we, the Jewish people, are supposed to celebrate Sukkot, a detailed instruction that Hasidim point to to say that and here's the expression, that dwelling in Sukkot is the one mitzvah we can do while wearing muddy boots. And while I understand and appreciate the lightness and levity of this expression, I can't help but fervently disagree with its takeaway. Because another definition of a mitzvah, in a more colloquial rather than halachic sense, is a deed that brings some goodness and some hope into this world. And in using that definition, I think it's safe to say that there are very few mitzvot that don't come about with some muddy boots, with getting our hands, or in this case of this metaphor, our feet dirty. Mitzvot that require the uncomfortable stepping out of what is warm, cozy, and familiar. And by doing so, to bring us closer together and closer to the holiness that comes with justice. And so today I want to honor what we this year are missing and to do so mindfully because it's easy to forget what Sisterhood Shabbat is all about. It's not our sisterhood women leading the service and reading and teaching Torah. It's our sisterhood women inviting all of us to remember the women who got their boots muddy. And it's our sisterhood women reminding us through their leadership that if we want to see change in our tradition, in our community, in our world, then we have an obligation to get ours muddy too, and to make our voices persistent and emphatic, to chip away at what is status quo for the sake of something much bigger and much holier. This Shabbat and this weekend 
as we remember the history of our sisterhood and as we honor and celebrate the mothers in our lives. Let's remember that sisterhood with a lowercase s in this example and motherhood are not exclusively biological. They are expressions of the unity and commitment to create change. And for that, we owe so much at the very least to remember and to say thank you. May all our sisters and mothers know our respect and appreciation. And may we use the sacred time of this Shabbat to remember the voices that made us who we are today. Amen.